Hiya, I'm Carl Jones, a senior lecturer of PR and advertising and former ad man. And today we're going to touch upon the research method of semiotics. The world is full of signs and symbols broadcast by brands and consumers in the mass media. And semiotics is a theory that could be used to uncover hidden meanings in the messages through decoding. We all practice semiotics every day because we are unconsciously interpreting the meaning of signs around us from traffic lights, advertising billboards, the architecture of buildings and the design of food packaging. And signs aren't only visual, they could be sounds or words too, such as the sound of an ambulance siren, which is often heard before the vehicle is seen. So seeing and interpreting or decoding these signs allows us to navigate our daily life and society as a whole. And semiotics is an important area of study, and its theories can be applied to communication. One of the two fathers of semiotics is American Charles Sanders Peirce, and the other originator is a Swiss Frenchman called Fernand de Saussure, who in the late 1800s thought that the communication systems or ways of communicating, particularly verbal languages such as English, Welsh, or Chinese, were not there to simply classify things, but often had different meanings. He stated that signs were made up of two elements, the signifier, and the signified, which together equal a sign. Contemporary French theorist Roland Barthes applied the Saussurian model of signifier plus signified equals sign to popular culture and specifically advertising, with many media channels broadcasting over 5,000 messages a day to the typical urban consumer, Barthes studied and observations are very important when applied to messaging that is broadcast through mass media. So, a signifier can be a word. So if I said D-O-G, then what is signified in your mind is what you would see, which is an animal with four legs and a tail. Then the sign would be what you would associate with a dog. And it could be a specific type of dog, such as a poodle or a Labrador. So together, signifier plus signified equals sign, which is a dog, the word dog, D-O-G, plus the image that you get in the head. And in this case, it's a corgi. Let's take a look at this ad. How many symbols do you see? There's the building, the reflection, the headline, the eyes, the smile, and the cleavage. There are many signs, but the main memorable sign, symbol, sorry, is an apple, which can mean different things in different languages. So in Chinese, it means peace. In Celtic, it can mean medicine. In Arabic, it means fertility. And the Christian religion, it means temptation, which seems to be the main message of this ad. Now I'm going to talk about discourse. Every ad has two messages. The first message of advertising is usually about the ideas or products or services. For example, this soap gets clothes cleaner. This cereal tastes better than before. This shampoo will stop dandruff. And the secondary message that advertising gives are ideas about society and culture. So ad depicts how the commodity is used, but also a number of things about society. For example, who does the laundry? Who prepares the breakfast? Gender roles are reflected in advertising, along with stereotypes, both negative and positive stereotypes. So I've just explained what is semiotics, how Pierce and Saussure are the two fathers of semiotics, and how semiotics can be used to explain popular culture, and how advertising has two messages. The main message of the ad, and the secondary messaging that reflects the society we currently live in. If you want to know more about semiotics, then please click on the links below. I'm Carl Jones, and thanks for listening.